where we left off, we were playing with layer styles within PhotoP to take our smart object vector, SVG, that we made in vector.com, and to just use layer styles to color it. And here I'm on a white background. And I had just turned on the contouring, which gives me a sharper profile at the edges. And I can decide if I want that or not. I can play with the shape of the contour. This is the default, but I can even do like different kinds of indents and moldings. It gets pretty, pretty involved. And you can definitely overdo it, but I'm just trying to show you all the things to play with. But I kind of like how this looks. And then, I guess I should show you this too, just like with the, the, uh, the vector program, you can add a stroke around everything if you want. You can outline it. That kind of goes against my, my drop shadows and my subtle coloring. But I can make that any color I want. I'll do yellow. I can make it any size I want. And right now I have that stroke on the outside of the line. This is, this is why I like to do these effects here as layer styles rather than in the vector. Because in the vector, your stroke will only ever be centered like that, where here you can play with it being an inside your edge. So if I want like piping, and I want red piping all the way around my image, I can put it inside that, that lip, and that can look kind of cool. I'm very zoomed in, but it's never a bad time to check your image size. Because the beauty of a smart object, huh, it did this for me too. Because I know I set it up. Some of you are asking, why does it look pixelated? And we check your image size. And this might be, it might be something I'm doing, but we set up 8 by 10 by 350, right? And now when I check the image size, it's no longer that. So the beauty of a smart object is I can always change its size to 8 by 10 make sure it's inches at 350 pixels per inch and then when I say okay now it's just a whole lot cleaner <laughs> because it's all outputted from the vector so at the end of the day make sure it's it's big enough okay so let's say that I'm done with that now I can turn off the background and then I want to say file export as a PNG. But before I do that, I want to save the last PNG with my name. And this is my black logo to submit. So this is SP23-2, Carl, assignment four, black logo, PNG. And now this one, file, export as a PNG with that background turned off at the highest quality. I don't want it to be confused. So where's that PNG? Oh, it's in exercise two for some reason. I put it to the desktop. <laughs> Don't know why I didn't go to downloads. Lots of weird things are happening in PhotoP today. All right, I'm going to put them both in my folder. And I'm going to label both of them. Oh, it did go into downloads eventually. Lovely. All right. So I'm going to label this. SP23-2, Carl, assignment four, color logo. So you want two PNGs, both of them. You want to be able to open just the one I just saved. I'll just bring that in again. And when you double click on them, oh, that one's not good. If it's a JPEG like this or a PSD like this, you'll see the white behind it when you open it in preview. What you want is for it to be a PNG where you see the gray behind it. And you can see the subtlety of things like a drop shadow then. 
And that makes it so this is how this logo would look on different colored websites. When we do our next project after spring break, we'll be doing t-shirt kind of spot illustrations. And we're going to play with it on white, on black, and on middle gray. And we want the color and the line art to show up on all three. So now I need to save this as a PSD. And notice, even though it's high resolution with a lot of color variations, because it's just two vector layers, smart object vector layers, even though it has a lot of layer styles on it, it's only five megabytes. It's not very large because vectors are great. And then I want to save that to my folder as my PSD because that's good for altering color options for my logo. And this is both the black and the color logo. Just on two different layers. So I'll mark that as green. Then I'll clean up some of these redundant files. Sometimes I need to see when they were created. Yeah, so that's the color one I want. Okay. But now I'm going to go to, and then I can close it in PhotoP. And I can post it to Canvas. But I want to go back to vector.com and show you some other things you can do with your shapes or just remind you of some things. As you try to improve and make the best black shape logo you can before you add color to it. So as I'm going to assignment four, I've already posted my refined sketch. I've posted my black logo as a PNG. Last thing I need to do is post my color. And you can post multiples if you want. I'm also going to show you how you can add color within vector.com. Because the problem with doing it as a layer style is that the entire image is going to be filled in with whatever those layer styles are. So what if I wanted selective color for certain places? So I'm going to just add some things because I know some of you might want that for yours. Put my color PNG in there. Here it is. And you want to know how to be able to edit your vector and keep working with it. And remember, we save them in two ways. We save them as a, a vector file, a VCTR file, that will open up in the freeware. But we also output them and export them as an SVG, and that can be opened and manipulated in Adobe Illustrator. Unfortunately, vector.com doesn't let you work on Illustrator files, like what are called AI files, in the way that PhotoP lets you work on Photoshop files. So I'm just going to sign in with my Google. I don't know if this is the right one or not. It doesn't matter because I can go to the home page and I can say open file. And then I can go to assignment four where I saved. Where is it? The vector file. They're easily lost because they won't give you a preview image because this is an unusual file type. But when I open that, there are all my paths. You know, all the different ones I was playing with and even the ones I turned off creating. So 
what else can I show you with this? We did the pen tool a whole lot, a whole lot of curves and a whole lot of straights. So one thing we can do, this is the, the one that matters. No, this is the one that matters. Okay. Selecting all the others are turned off. I'll lock those just so I don't forget. So all the ones I've turned off, I've locked. I'm going to select this and copy it, Command C, and then Command V, paste it onto a new path, then sync it up. So now I have two paths. I'm going to lock the one underneath and turn it off. Or maybe leave it on. I don't know. But this one on top, now I can play with colors. So one easy way I can play with colors, instead of filling it with black, I can change the fill color to something else. Like that crazy green. Millions of colors are available. I do not like that green so much, though. What other options do we have? Well, if you drop down on the color, you also have options for a linear gradient or a radial gradient. And this is true within Adobe Illustrator as well. And then you can click on it and you can actually customize aspects of the gradient. And you can actually use colors as well. Now the gradient looks a little bit different than it does in Photopea. The scales here, I can put different colors on it. And they can be millions of colors I'm just using from the defaults. But what I like about this scale is it gives you something that Illustrator gives you that the layer styles doesn't in Photopea. And that's, you can actually play with the opacity of the color within the gradient. So if I like that blue, but I think that blue is kind of too electric, it's just too strong, instead of changing the color to a darker blue or a redder blue or whatever, I can just set it to like a 40% opacity. And now you see how that blue has a much lesser impact. I can also change, should be able to change, the angle of the gradient. So click it here. Now where can I do that? I don't know. It's getting weird now. So that's how you can do more complex color within the vector itself. And that, then that will save within the SVG. But honestly, it's not as intuitive as doing it within layer styles and photo people. But why do I show it? Because what if you have one part of your vector logo that you want one color and another part that you want another color and you want them to both be vectors, right? So I'm going to make a little crown for my, my bird here. So I'll, I'll turn this one into a color. I won't use green. Let's use blue, like the Twitter bird. OK, then I'm going to lock that one, turn it off, or turn it on. OK, and then I'm going to use the pen tool. And on a new, a new path, Let's make a really simple crown. And I can go off the, uh, the artboard too. And then just at the bottom, I'm just going to pull a curve. Oh, I thought I was doing that. But I'm going to have to do it after the fact. So if I double click now, I'll see all the angles. And then I can hover over this. And I can pull a curve. Or if I double click it, it will give me curves and I can hold down command and I can straighten this side. Then I can curve this side. Great. Now I'm going to take the properties of this, this new path, and I'm going to fill this in with, I'm going to turn off the border and fill it in with a different color. So not the blue, but let's say the green. Voila. And maybe I want an eye for my, for my color design that I didn't have in my black design. So let me use the shape tool because you can also, just like we did in Photoshop with, or Photo P with exercise two, you can use the shape tool 
to layer up and get